Welcome to the Queen of Hearts podcast. And here's the queen herself, registered dietitian Heather Klug. In today's crazy, messy, and sometimes frustrating world, do you find it hard to feel thankful some days? Today on the Queen of Hearts podcast, we're going to discuss the many ways to build gratitude into your daily life and touch upon differences in gratitude across cultures and even genders. I'm Heather Klug. And I'm Bethany DeBrew Adams. And we're from the Karen Yance Women's Cardiac Awareness Center. Bethany, last year around this time, we did an episode on how gratitude improves overall health and how it helps our heart. Mm-hmm. We also reviewed how gratitude is something to be practiced regularly. Yep. And then reviewed a couple of journaling techniques. Yes, we discussed the three good things before bedtime exercise Mm -hmm. and the five question practice looking at five key areas of our lives, such as health, eating, activity, relationships, and time to dig deeper into finding things to be grateful for. I have to say, since we discussed those exercises, I do practice them a lot more regularly. Okay. I'm not 100%, of course, (laughs) but definitely more regular than before we recorded that episode. Well, that's good. I mean, any improvement is still improvement, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I I like to think I'm pretty good with being grateful, but I probably could be better. (laughs) You know, it's one of those things that I think we mentioned this in last year's podcast. It's something that you have to practice to make a habit. And Mm -hmm. when we get out of that nice habit, it gets harder to do. So we'll link to that episode in case any of our listeners want a refresher, or if you're new to listening to our podcast and you missed that episode. All right. That sounds good. Now today we're going to talk about some gender and cultural differences with regards to gratitude, and then give you some great ideas to build gratitude into your daily lives. Well, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned gender differences. Mm -hmm. So is this like battle of the sexes, like man (laughs) versus woman who expresses more gratitude or who experiences more gratitude? Yes, it is kind of a, you know, battle of the sexes (laughs) thing. Studies have shown that women actually have an advantage over men when it comes, I know, when it comes to experiencing and expressing gratitude probably doesn't come as too much of a surprise. Not even a little bit. Okay. Women are more likely than men to express gratitude on a daily basis, about 52% versus 44%, and feel that they have much to be thankful for. That was 64% for women versus 50% for men. Mm -hmm. And also to express gratitude to a wider variety of people. The gender difference is larger for expressing gratitude than experiencing it, though. Okay. That doesn't surprise me. (laughs) That doesn't surprise me either. Yeah. I mean, finally, we get something where women are benefiting more than men. Like, Right? (laughs) You know, it's a little something, but it's a nugget that we can hold on to. You know, I feel a little bit bad for the men. I mean, you know, a little bit, not very much, because it's (laughs) nice to hear that women have this advantage. And I think I know, like, knowing a lot of the men in my world and in my life, I think I know why women have this advantage with feeling gratitude and expressing gratitude, Mm -hmm. especially the expressing gratitude part. So do we know, I like, I think you're going to tell us, but do we know why (laughs) women have this advantage? Yeah. Some of the explanation has to do with how women perceive gratitude. Mm -hmm. To many women, gratitude is less complex. It's less uncertain. It's less conflicting. Mm -hmm. And women also perceive gratitude to be more more interesting and exciting. Okay. Yeah. Men tend to feel more burden when given a gift or if somebody <laughs> does something nice for them. <laughs> I, I can totally see that like, oh my God, now I have to do something for you. Like, yeah. <laughs> they don't like, I think it's like in, a, in the mind of some men, it must be like an extra task that yeah. they have to complete if somebody does this for them. Right. I'm also wondering too, and this is just in my own brain, but I'm also wondering because women for so long were given crumbs. 
you know, like, okay, we had to be really grateful for the little things. And so maybe we've just kind of internalized being more focused on some of the smaller things and being thankful for those things that we have in our life. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I can kind of see that. Yeah. So are men just, are they wigged out by, by the idea of like, saying thank you to somebody else like they don't know how to respond or like oh my gosh what do I do this person helped me with x y and z and now I have to do something like what's this about yeah so in the studies where I read about this they've explained it as you know for men it's just a more complicated experience for them (laughs) you know they are more critical of the experience like they analyze it more they aren't sure how to respond and in turn they're less likely to feel and express gratitude back. In many studies, though, men who are able to openly express their emotions, like if they're more comfortable with doing that, mm-hmm. it mediated that gender difference somewhat. Like okay, they were okay so, to express it back. So lesson here, folks, men, be a little more in touch with your feelings, <laughs> a little more in touch with your emotions. Right. So being comfortable expressing emotions was another factor. And you may not find this surprising, but older men in particular seem to have a tough time experiencing and expressing gratitude due to how they view masculinity. You're kidding. (laughs) I am not. (laughs) Shocker. I know, right? It's so shocking. Well, I mean, we think of a certain generation of men and that probably kind of, you know, is dying out a little bit. It because those older generations of men were, you know, you're a tough guy and you don't show your emotions and you're not vulnerable and you keep it all inside and they need to be autonomous. They need to be self-sufficient. They need to be the backbone of their family, you know? So right. if someone offers you help or they do a favor for you, it makes you, it means you're vulnerable. I think it, there's like this idea that, uh-oh, now you're vulnerable, which is a bit of a blow to the whole, that whole idea of masculinity. Exactly. And this seems to affect American men even more so. Shocking. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) American men see gratitude as an undesirable and difficult to express emotion, sometimes even finding it humiliating. Really? Yeah. Over a third of American men ages 35 to 50. I don't think that's older, by the way, but that was. Yes. Now that we're in that age bracket, right? That's not older. (laughs) I would have thought older would have been over 65 or something. But anyway, over a third of American men ages 35 to 50 said they would prefer to conceal gratitude rather than to openly express it. Uh, Okay, then that, okay. I I can understand that maybe like when we talk about like gratitude journaling or whatever, the things, the just general things that you're thankful for. But if somebody does something nice for you, yeah, you know, oh, I'm going to I'm going to keep my gratitude to myself. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> or if you had or if you had to write like a a thank you letter to someone, oh, yeah. like sometimes that's really hard for some people cuz you're yeah. not sure what to say in it, but you're right to say thank you with that doesn't seem like a hard thing to say and to say right. it genuinely. So that's weird yeah. to me that that's like something challenging to do. I yeah, I think so too. And you know, that's just too bad because if you're not expressing gratitude, you know, it's harder to make those social connections and form those relationships that you need to have throughout your life. You know, like I've heard gratitude being described as like a social glue, you know, you can't have people doing nice things for you and you're never appreciative because then (laughs) you're going to have resentment and people aren't going to want to be friends with you. Right. That's correct. I mean, none of us get through life without the help of others, Mm -hmm. whether that's physically, emotionally, financially, intellectually, socially, right? I mean, we need others to be whole. Yeah, that is so true. Now, let's also talk about, because you mentioned cultural differences before when you were getting into this topic. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to gratitude, what are these cultural differences that you're thinking or you're talking about? Yeah, this was really very interesting to me, but studies have found that many other cultures around the world, especially more collectivist 
societies, which is about 85% of the world's population, by the way. Mm -hmm. I found that kind of interesting too. So a lot of these other cultures around the world find verbal gratitude. So saying a simple thank you, which is very common in the United States, but people find this verbal gratitude saying thank you to either be bizarre, rude, Hmm. or inappropriate. Language. Yeah, isn't that? In some languages, there aren't even words or phrases for thank you. I mean, most mm-hmm. other cultures actually use behaviors or actions as a way of expressing gratitude. And this is a different type of gratitude called connective gratitude, in which a person reciprocates by doing something nice for the other person. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Okay. So in the Amish culture, actions rather than words are typically used to express courtesy because nonverbal behaviors are considered more appropriate. Okay. Another example. So there's a group of people in central Malaysia. I'm not sure if I'm saying their name correctly, but they're semi Sanoi and they also practice this type of connective gratitude. So if a hunter kills an animal, he shares it equally with everyone in the tribe. Okay. And other people from the tribe come over. So if he brings the animal back to everybody, they just all come and, you know, they divide it up equally, basically. Sure. And in their culture, it would be considered very rude to say thank you to the hunter by others in the group because everyone is expected to share what they can. And in their culture, to give a verbal thanks would be giving that person special treatment or more prestige, which is considered rude. Huh. I suppose that makes sense if you think about it. Yeah, in a way. (laughs) So what you're saying is when we travel, (laughs) especially if we're traveling to non-English speaking countries, we need to be aware of this Mm -hmm. so that, you know, other cultures aren't being rude. You know, if they don't say thank you to us, they may just express gratitude differently. And we may need to maybe do a little research before we go so that we're adhering to their customs appropriately as well. Right. And I think that maybe applies to even here in the United States, where Mm -hmm. we are a melting pot and we have lots of different people Mm -hmm. from all over the world that live here too. And they may have different ways of doing things. So I think often from our perspective, if we do something for somebody, we expect them to say thank you. And that might not be something that they grew up doing in their home culture, if that makes sense, or their home country. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's finish by talking about various ways we can build gratitude in our daily lives. So we have seven different suggestions for people. Yes, and I'm going to start by going back to one that we mentioned last year, and that's keeping a gratitude journal. So like I said, we talked about this in our gratitude podcast from last year. And a gratitude journal sounds like it's a very fancy organized thing, but it certainly doesn't have to be. So whether you jot down three things you're grateful each day in the morning or before bed or when you think about it, you know, research shows that the more consistently you do this, the more rewarding it is for you. So you just have to make it a habit. And the benefits show up really fast, like within a week or two. So like if you start today and, you know, next week is Thanksgiving, make it, you know, every day from here until next Friday, pretty soon you're, you have a habit already. Right. And there are gratitude journals you can buy, or you can jot down thoughts in a plain notebook Mm -hmm. or just make it your own. I've read other things where sometimes instead of writing it down, somebody might draw it or paint it or sketch it. Some people like to do mood boards, I guess, whatever kind of appeals to you. Yeah. You know, kind of make it your own. Put it on your phone, you know. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Whatever is going to make it easiest for you to do. It doesn't have to be a painful, expensive undertaking. Are you thinking like you take pictures with your phone of things you're grateful for? Heck, you could do that. You could jot it down in your notes. I'm sure there's an app somewhere for (laughs) gratitude journaling, you know, like there's an app for everything. So, you know, you have your phone with you almost all the time. Why not do it that way? Yeah, it's a good idea. All right. A second way to build gratitude is to create a gratitude 
jar. Mm -hmm. So I just read about this and I'm like, that's kind of a cool idea. I might do this with my family this year. But what you do is you get a giant glass jar and you can decorate it if you'd like. And each day you write down something you are grateful for on a small piece of paper, fold it and place it into the jar. And then at the end of the year, or whatever time frame you want to create for yourself, maybe you do it each month or something too. remove all your gratitude notes and read them. And you could consider doing this together with like family, or you could do it with close friends that you have, and each person can create their own gratitude jar. That's a nice idea. I, I picture people sitting at Thanksgiving dinner and pulling those out and, hey, look at what we're grateful for this year. Yeah. A third idea to build gratitude is to give thanks to those around you. So certainly these are easy things. Smile at people, say thank mm. you when someone does something nice. If it's appropriate and safe, you can give somebody a hug, mm -hmm. <laughs> send a thank you card to brighten someone's day. Just being nice to people around you, right? Yeah. And I bet if you had a mother like mine who made you write thank you notes for like everything as a kid, your mother <laughs> would be thrilled if you sent her a thank you note, like an actual card. Holy cow. Yes. Yeah. And if you have people, you know, like my friends or my husband, you could text them with a thank you or a meme or a gif or a picture of you. You know, if they gave you a present, you using the present, something nice like that. Oh, that's a nice idea. It's so nice to receive something like that. I, I think that's like something that can make somebody's day, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a quote I just want to share with everybody. I thought it was kind of nice. It's from William Arthur Ward. And he says, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's so, a nice way to think of it. Isn't it? So make sure that you're expressing it and letting the people around you know that they're appreciated. Yes. So the fourth idea to build gratitude is to actually, now that we can do this, is spend quality <laughs> time with your family and friends and the people who are really important to you. And here's the trick. Be present. Like, mm -hmm. don't, I mean... My husband and I joke because we'll sit and, you know, look at our phones together. And he actually sent me a text across the room that said, I could look at my phone next to you for the rest of my life, which was very sweet. Aww. And I love that. But when I'm out with like friends that I haven't seen in a while and they constantly look at the phone, it's like, really, are you even listening to me? Are we right. even here together? So just when you're spending time with people, make them a priority. That's what makes like the experience is just put down the screens and pay attention to the people you're with. Oh, I totally agree. Maybe even grab a basket and have everyone put their phones in the basket when they arrive. And, you know, I mean, it's those memories that you make with people, right? And some mm -hmm. of my favorite memories are being with people I love and care about. So make sure when you're with your family, friends, make sure, like you said, it's a priority and it's quality kind of time. All right, we'll move on to the fifth way to build gratitude, and that is to spend time in nature. Mm. Nature is one of life's beautiful gifts, and it's really best appreciated in person. So let your eyes take in the beautiful trees, the rock formations, the sound of water, you know, the shapes of clouds, There's so many animals, birds, all sorts of mm -hmm. things in nature. In winter, you can see animals and their tracks really well. Lots of great things in nature. Yeah. And, you know, I love like, especially as we get into winter, one of the nice things about winter is the stillness mm. of nature. You know, you get a snowfall and it just muffles the sound and everything's nice and quiet. But like for those people who live in areas where you might not have nature as abundantly around you, you know, like I think about when I go into work. I have to walk over the bridge that goes over the river. And every day I kind of make it a point to look, see what's going on in the river. And there's sometimes there's ducks in there. Sometimes you can mm -hmm. see fish swimming around. And it's just something I do to be like, okay, get myself centered and ready for the day. You know, it doesn't have yeah. to be a big trek out to the middle of nowhere. Right. All right. The sixth way to build gratitude is to volunteer your time to help and serve others. Mm. To really build gratitude, it helps to pick something that is very meaningful to you. Um, if you care about clean water, maybe you pick up trash from streams and beaches. 
If you care about the welfare of children, maybe you volunteer to tutor children. If you care about animals, maybe you volunteer at an animal shelter. Yeah, this is another thing that can be really personal to you and it doesn't have to be a huge big deal. I think of like my husband and I love the beach. So when mm-hmm. we're on the beach, we take a bag with us and we pick up trash. Oh, that's a you good know? idea. It's not an organized event. We just do it because we like to keep the beach clean, you know? Aw, that's nice. I should do that. It's a good idea. Other suggestions for places you can volunteer, you could consider your local public library, your parks and rec department, community centers, you know, churches or different faith organizations, state and national parks often Mm -hmm. use a lot of volunteers. And just so you know, if you have over 250 service hours, you can get a free volunteer pass, which is worth over like $100. So check out their websites. You could also volunteer at food banks and homeless shelters, disaster relief organizations, human and civil rights organizations, arts and cultural organizations, and then retirement homes and long-term care facilities. Yes. And finally, the seventh way we're going to suggest to build gratitude is to donate to a charity or a cause that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Donating to something that's important to you produces feelings of gratitude in you and to the people behind the cause you donated money to. So I'm sure you can think of any number of charitable causes in your community. But if you need a cause that you'd like to focus on for the next year, check out charitynavigator.org. Yes. I've used them many times before I decide to donate to a charity because I like to see how they spend their money, right? I want most of that money to go to the actual cause. Right. All right. Now, the whole point of feeling and expressing gratitude is not just to make ourselves feel better or to improve our own life. Gratitude encourages behaviors such as generosity, compassion, and charitable giving. It motivates us to go out and do things for others, to give back. Wherever you are in your gratitude journey, we hope we've given you ideas to continue making gratitude a part of your daily life. So we're going to leave you with a quote from Alan Cohen on gratitude, and that is, gratitude, like faith, is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it grows. Oh, I love that. We are grateful to all our wonderful listeners. Yes, we are. (laughs) We thank you for taking the time to listen and to being open to new information about taking care of your heart and the hearts of others. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the Queen of Hearts podcast and the Karen Yant Center YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our heart-healthy content. Thank you again for listening, everyone. And as we always say, be the ruler of your own heart. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Queen of Hearts podcast. Our podcast is recorded here at the Karen Yance Women's Cardiac Awareness Center inside Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. For more heart-healthy tips, info, recipes, and more, Visit our website at www.karenyantcenter.org, like us on Facebook at Karen Yant Center, and follow us on Pinterest. If you like what you hear, subscribe to our show and be sure to tell your friends. Until next time, ladies, be ruler of your own heart.